this is Alan Muscat, and he is, I call him a naturalist. He calls himself a nut. Is that right? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes, and a forger into the woods. You know, I love to garden, and I'm always looking for new plants and things to do, but I've never thought about eating them. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do today, right? Yep, yeah, let's look. All right, mm -hmm. so let's go. Come on into the woods, and we'll see what we can find to eat. This is the, the flowers. I mean, maybe we should Okay, so what, did, what do we got here? It's a wild mint. And what we'll do is, if you got the time right and the attention, you actually pull the little flower out. You'll just have rosemary in the yard. You'll see that very similar yeah. flower because that's yeah. a mint too. Uh -huh. All right, I have daylilies in my garden. What are we going to do with the daylilies? I know the deer love to eat my daylilies. Yeah. Yeah. And you probably know the, the lily, the flower. This is not, you know, this is not the time of year yet. Yeah. But the whole plant's edible. It was brought by the settlers here to eat. Mm -hmm. So it's just, well, what time of year is it? Spring, you want shoots, just like the asparagus. You can eat the shoots. And if it's a little early, what we used in the meal is the tubers or the bulbs. And uh, that's what we want to get out of the ground. And you probably want a bigger shovel because what I've got is the shoot. And you can use this. Uh -huh. You peel it and um, you just simmer it and saute it. Or you could try it. Just like that and see what you think. Right out of the right yeah. out of the garden? Yeah. It's, it's gonna taste like an onion or what's it gonna taste like? This is a lily, so if it tastes like onion, I picked the wrong thing. <laughs> Very good in my mouth. <laughs> oh that's really fresh tasting. Yeah. Yeah, well it couldn't be fresher. It's um yeah, it's like a leek without the onion onion flavor. That's very good. I like that. And what we're gonna make um, pancakes from, if I can get it out of the ground, is um the tubers, is the that tubers. Are there? yeah. Because in the early spring, all the energy has been stored down in the roots. Okay. And um, and it's kind of like a little potato. Well, I know from gardening, you know, like your daylilies, you need to separate them out. So That's you know, because right. they get too crowded and they won't bloom. So if you actually dig out and you can still have the flowers from the plants, but you can eat the ones that are too packed, right? Yeah. And yeah. the. Uh, you know, the tiger lily is going to be a better um, choice than a lot of the cultivars that we have. Oh, really? The plain old orange tiger The plain lily? old orange. That's the original. That grows wild. Yeah. And the, they call it down here in the south ditch lily. Because you see it in the, the ditch. ditches and yeah. everywhere. In fact, it's probably going to be easier over here to get it. Because okay. I really want you to see. See? Oh, yeah. That just fell off right off of the plant. Okay, so this tuber what came off of here. Okay, you wouldn't dry it or anything. You use it fresh like this, right? Yeah, and we cook it. All of, all of these parts of the plant you cook. So okay, even though you take you can take a taste raw when you fix an actual meal. Uh -huh. Yeah, we just simmer it. Okay, come on, yeah. let's go. Let's find it. Yes. This is a wild onion. So it ought to smell like that. So try it. Yes, that smells exactly like yeah. an onion. It has a little bit of a garlic Let me check smell to, to be it. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you want to make sure, huh? Yeah, it's, this is a great. It's a real prize. It's a real mellow, sweet, especially early on uh -huh. version of onion. I'll show you when I pull one up. You'll see that um, it's got that look. It looked very familiar, and um, it's okay in this case if I leave the bottom because it'll grow back that way. Okay, so we're not like destroying it. It's like I'll replenishing. Tell you what you do. It's sustainable, yeah. really. And people worry about that because there's a lot. It's very popular. A lot of them are picked. But if you've ever thrown an onion in the compost pile, it grows back. So would you leave that put where that, you forged? Yeah, you put that so back. So I put in this the back in the hole mm -hmm. where you were. Yeah. And plant it back. And that in there? will come back. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is the part where we eat, just like a little scallion. That is so Pretty cool, sweet. Alan. <laughs> I love that idea. Yeah. Okay. I see a little flower here, and when you walk yeah. through the woods, you can't eat every flower, but could we maybe right. possibly eat this one? That's right. Taste that one. Take one of those flowers and taste it. What do you taste? Oh, it has a distinct flavor. Yeah. More like arugula it's sweet. or something. That is a wild arugula. Oh, how about that? That was very good. <laughs> see, you've got the knowledge. I'm a natural mm -hmm. forager, aren't I? I can tell right now. <laughs> oh. This so you could take these and put them onto a salad. That's right. Yeah. And that would be such a beautiful topping to yeah. that, or right on Gorgeous. the side of a plate. Yeah. Oh, and that these only bloom in the springtime right now. Yeah, that's right. So I'm assuming that when you forge, there are certain times of the year, certain seasons, certain things that you're looking for each time you go out. So in your case, or in Michael, who's our chef, who's going to help us cook up some stuff yeah. later on, you plan your menu around the season when you're going to be doing your foraging, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and sometimes you never know till last minute 
It makes it very hard to make a big dinner party with a set menu. Oh. Wow, Alan, I tell you, we're cooking up some great stuff over there. Look how pretty this looks from our little tromping in the woods. It's gorgeous. Yeah, so walk me through this. Now, it looks so much different than when we found it. Well, we got a mix of things here, uh, some of which we got beforehand and some of which we got together, and some in the field and some in the woods. So Sort of the way everybody shops for food, right? Yeah, you go to where it's growing, and some of it's from the garden and the greenhouse. And um, so you might recognize some of this, like nasturtiums uh -huh. in the garden, violet flowers in the yard, uh, big, nice watercress. And so these little guys right here, they, they look like stylus, but they're, what are they? We have taken these out of the little wild mints that we oh, saw. Yeah, you remember, yeah. they're standing straight up. They look so different when you pull them all out yeah. and put them all yeah. separate on their own. Yeah, I hired, I hired a four-year-old to do this for me. <laughs> 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 it was the other ones with the great for them, to do yes. that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, and here? Yeah, this is um, miner's lettuce. And uh, this is down in the greenhouse, so we picked this beforehand. And it's wild down in California. We won't find it wild here, so we have it in the greenhouse where it's warmer. Okay. It's a wonderful salad green. So could you grow these in a pot, though, anywhere you wanted to? I, I would think so. Yeah? That does Kelly. She's the gardener in, in the house. So. Yeah, awesome. Never, I don't I need to garden. So <laughs> and this one right here? Yeah, so just like watercress, this is branch lettuce. This will be in the stream bed. Uh -huh. And... Um, it's mostly at higher elevations, so that's why we didn't see it today. But it's a classic for our, you know, Appalachian area to yeah. find that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these are absolutely beautiful. They, mm -hmm. A nice mix. Mike, you've got big plans for this salad. Come over here and tell me what you're going to do with this. Uh, there's a, a a beautiful vinegar that Alan made of uh, prickly pear. Um, which is the prickly pear fruit. And you cook too. You're so perfect. I don't always have help. Yeah. 